Hello lads and welcome back to the channel. My name is Scottish Koala and today I'm going to teach you guys how to install both user skins and custom jet flames to your War Thunder vehicles. Alright guys, so today we're going to be installing Anil Toro's Yugoslav skin for the F-84 Thunderjet. This skin is technically for the Italian F-84G, but we're going to install it on the US F-84B. It should still work fine. We'll also install a clear jet exhaust in the second part of the video, and if you'd like to skip to that process, the timestamp will be in the video description. Now I want you guys to all go check out Anil Toro on War Thunder Live, as he makes some amazing skins, several of which I've used in the past videos. He of course does all this work for free, and the skins are of such high quality for so many different aircraft, I just had to give him a shout out, especially after he reached out to me on my P51H video asking if I could let viewers know just where I got the skin from just to help him out a little. Thanks for your amazing work my man, I do hope you continue. Another user who makes some amazing skins that I have used in my past videos is Comrade Panda, so if you guys are looking for some sick skins for jets or props, these two guys have definitely got you covered. Links will be in the description to both their pages on live.warthunder and Anil Toro even has his own YouTube so do go check that out as well. I don't personally use skins on my ground vehicles, but the process I'm going to show you today is exactly the same for tanks, so don't worry about that. I'm also going to touch on how Mac users can install custom skins too for those few people out there who do play War Thunder from an Apple machine. Now the first step is going to be to find the skin you want for download on whatever website you like. I'm using live.warthunder as it's quick, simple, and I'm sure most of you guys are on here already. Click on camouflages and type into the search box the plane you're looking for a skin for. Browse through the multitude of skins available and when you found one you'd like, either click on it to bring up a more isolated view or simply hit download. Once downloaded, you'll have a zipped file that will go into your downloads. I've moved mine onto my desktop for ease of use and I recommend you guys do the same. If you don't know what a zipped file is, there are plenty of people who can explain it far better than me, but essentially it just means that the file has been compressed for easy downloadability and you'll have to uncompress it using WinRAR or any other archiving program of your choice. Again, there are plenty of people who can explain these programs far better than me, so do look things up if you are still confused. I'm using WinRAR and so I simply right click the zipped file and click on extract here. A folder will appear on your desktop containing all the files for the custom skin you chose. Now we have to create a custom template for that skin, which we do in game. Go to the customization options for the vehicle you want to reskin and hit this magic wand tool labeled create a user skin file, which will give this plane a second camouflage option. This option will be the default skin for now, but it means we can reskin the plane without losing the original camouflage. Now you'll have to find the folder that War Thunder is installed in. There are several ways to do this, but if you installed War Thunder in its default destination, the best way to find this folder is to go to your files, click on C, Program Files, x86, Steam, and then Steam Apps, and then click on the common folder and find War Thunder. If you didn't install War Thunder using Steam, then I'm sure there are other tutorials out there for you. Once we are in War Thunder's main folder, find the User Skins folder and then open up the folder for the plane you want to reskin. This is the folder we created by hitting the magic wand in the game's customization tab. Once here, open the unzipped user skin folder and copy paste all the files into the template folder for the plane, replacing any files as necessary. Now go back into War Thunder, customization, and select your new skin, probably titled template underscore and the name of the plane you reskinned. Feel free to rename the skin by renaming the folder you copy pasted those files into. You can now delete the zipped file you downloaded as well as the folder you extracted from it. Now the F-84 is a jet aircraft and so will have an exhaust that many people like to customize or simply remove altogether. Some skins include a custom jet exhaust with the skin and if your skin does, congratulations, you're done already. Copy pasting the files from the downloaded folder into the template folder will also have copied over a custom exhaust or jet flame and the user skin will already be coded to work with the new exhaust. If you'd like to install a custom exhaust into a skin that doesn't already have one or simply onto the default camouflage of the plane, then this section is for you. Either way, you'll need to create a user skin template folder and since we've already done that to install install the Yugoslav skin onto the F-84, we can just use that folder. Again, if you need help navigating to War Thunder's root folder, it's as follows. C, Program Files x86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and then War Thunder. The user's template will be in the user skins folder. Find the plane you're after and open up that folder. Installing a custom jet exhaust works very similarly to installing a user skin. You'll download a zipped file, extract it, open up the extracted file folder, and copy paste the files inside into the user template folder. Now we have to allow our skin to use the new exhaust rather than the original jet flame effect of the game. To do this, we'll open up this BLK folder using Notepad. Below the existing code in the file, hit enter and we're going to input some new code to have this template use the new exhaust. This code is simple and easy to put in. I'll even leave it in the description of the video for you guys to copy and paste if you wish. Just make sure there is a skipped line between blocks of code and you'll be fine. If anything goes wrong with the skin, don't worry. Just come back to this file and make sure all the code is as you see on my file. Our new code will be exactly as follows, so make sure to type it in correctly or it won't work. 
replace underscore tex open brace or bracket the second line will be space from colon t equals quotations jet underscore flame asterisk quotation the third line will be space two colon t equals quotation and you're going to type here the name of the file which you copied over which in this case is realistic underscore jet underscore flame there are many different custom jet exhausts for either clear or different colors, so make sure you get the name of the file correct. Be sure to include .dds and close with another quotation. The last line will simply be a close brace or bracket, and now you can save and exit the file. If you are on a Mac, you want to open up War Thunder, not the game itself, but the launcher, right click and click show in Finder. This will lead you to War Thunder's root folder, and from there you follow the exact same steps. Congratulations, we now have both a custom skin and a clear or colored jet exhaust. Be sure to browse live.war Thunder for all the custom skins you could want, and do make sure to check out both Anil Toro and Comrade Panda. Just tell them the Scottish Koala sent you, and definitely thank them for their awesome work. If you'd like a tutorial on how to install user models or missions, or a tutorial on installing custom sound mods, do leave it in the comment section below as I'd love to help you guys out. As always, please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy it as it really helps me out and I will see you next video. Special announcement, I'm going to be live streaming War Thunder this coming weekend on the 6th or 7th of October. Let me know if you guys would prefer me to stream on a Friday night, Saturday morning or Saturday night. I'll upload a video with the official schedule in a couple of days and also a short clip on my channel to notify you when I do begin streaming. Go follow me over at Twitch TV in the description and I will see you there.